now available in paperback. Those who refuse the gift of eternal life are condemned to wander in the darkness of Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night at online booksellers today. Yesterday, the World Health Organization warned the nation's leaders against using the lockdown approach for containing outbreaks of COVID-19. Now, the World Health Organization originally proposed that nation's leaders go out here and use a lockdown approach to combat COVID-19 in an effort to allegedly flatten the curve and decrease the number of people with the virus so that they would not overwhelm the nation's hospitals and the hospitals in other parts of the world. However, in a reversal of its original proposal, the World Health Organization has proposed that the nation's leaders not lock down its citizens due to the economic damage that these lockdowns of people have done all across the globe. Now, when this pandemic started in March, the World Health Organization proposed that nations close all of their so-called non-essential businesses in an effort to allegedly flatten the curve as related to the statistical number of individuals who would get infected and would go to the hospitals and prevent those hospitals from getting so-called overwhelmed. However, in the last eight months since the pandemic has started, we have seen devastating economic damage to the United States and countries all across the globe by following this theory proposed by doctors like Anthony Fauci here in the United States. Now, your Dr. Fauci, when he proposed this theory, was thinking about statistical numbers as related to people who were infected, but he was not thinking about the long-term consequences as related to not only the economy of the United States, but the mental health of the United States. And he was only proposing as related to the statistics as related to the virus, but not thinking about the other forms of casualties not related to COVID-19. Because in the last eight months, we have seen not only an increase in people who are unemployed because half the country is out of work, but we have also seen an increase in people who are struggling with mental health issues. And these mental health issues primarily come from the economic situation being changed for almost half of the country because half of the country is out of work. And all of that trouble has people stressed out. And those people, when they're out of work, they're frustrated, they're angry. And what happens with some people is they wind up exploding in anger. And that's why we've seen an increase in domestic violence all across the country. And it's also why we've seen a lot of people winding up becoming anxious, winding up becoming depressed, and even winding up with some people committing suicide. And we've seen the increase in suicide among children grow exponentially as a result of your Dr. Fauci's theory as related to closing non-essential businesses. Because these not so-called non-essential businesses were essential for the economy and they were essential for the stability of the country because most people when their economic situation is made unstable this is one of the things that causes stress on those people it increases their anxiety and their worry and their depression and it can lead to people winding up having their mental health deteriorate and that mental health deteriorating can lead to incidents of domestic violence, it can lead to drug use, and it can lead to people winding up so despondent that they start thinking of taking their own lives 
instead of trying to hang in there. And all of these things were not really thought about critically by people like your Dr. Anthony Fauci, who only saw the statistics about the virus, but did not really see the long-term damage his so-called cure was going to do to people. So the economic side effects have had more of an impact on people, and now the World Health Organization seeing the devastation as related to the economic damage that has been done all across the globe, now, eight months later, wants to flip-flop and now wants to warn against these lockdowns, and now they want to say that countries should not use this approach to co combat pockets of the virus. And this really damages the credibility of the World Health Organization because I could have told those members of the World Health Organization back in March that this was going to be the end result of following this approach and this so-called theory because when you close so-called non-essential businesses down, you are destroying a person's livelihood, you are destroying a person's ability to make a living, and when you take away a person's ability to make a living, you're going to cause more stress on that individual, you're going to cause more anxiety in that individual, and you're going to cause that person's mental health to deteriorate. And when those people's mental health starts to deteriorate, then they wind up becoming far more dangerous than this whole COVID-19 because this person feels like they are in a state where they have nothing to lose, and that's what makes a person extremely dangerous. And we saw examples of this with the incident where your Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, decided to continue to further impose further restrictions on people, and these stressed out people came to the governor's state house with armed with weapons in an effort to confront her. Moreover, we saw the explosion of rage with the murder of George Floyd all across the globe as a result of these COVID-19 lockdowns, and these lockdowns have proven to be a completely failed approach to combating the virus. And the reason why it's a failed approach is because after we had the lockdowns, which were supposed to last two weeks but went three months, and then after people started pushing back, we started to see a reopening of economies because people started to connect dots and realize that if we close all the non-essential businesses in places like here in America, what happens is you don't have anybody generating any revenue. And if you don't have anybody generating any revenue to pay taxes, then there is no money for the not-for-profit business known as hospitals, especially in the case of state budgets here, like in America, municipal hospitals. So there's no revenue to pay doctors for their services. And I guess that's the main reason why your World Health Organization has flip-flopped. They realized that these lockdowns were going to affect the bottom line as related to doctors all across this country. Because if people are not working to generate revenue to pay taxes, then there is no money to pay doctors all across the globe, and your doctors are not going to work for free during the pandemic. Now, it doesn't help even that your President Trump cut the funding to the World Health Organization as a result of their faulty information, and it doesn't hurt help that the World Health Organization has, again, shattered its own credibility by flip-flopping as related to this pandemic. You would think an organization that is supposed to be about the world health would have thought more critically before it presented this proposal. And you think an organization that was 
as related to health would have factored in things like people's mental health as related to their economics before making this proposal back in March. So this organization's credibility has taken a major hit with this announcement, and it really shows how this whole lockdown theory has been a complete failure and how this lockdown theory and, and approach just has not worked from day one. Because one of the things I said was going to happen was once you reopen everything, all of those people who were inside of their homes, they are going to come out, they're going to enter the atmosphere, and you're going to see a further resurgence of the virus because these unexposed people are now being exposed to the virus. And in another flip-flop from the World Health Organization and Dr. Fauci, they talked about how people being indoors during the fall would lead to an increase in the virus. Well, we had people in their houses in March to allegedly flatten the curve, and then now we have them talking about how this is going to lead to an increase in the virus. So which one is it, World Health Organization and Dr. Fauci? Which one is it that causes the virus? So I look at their whole theory on this virus, and these people who were supposed to be the scientists we're supposed to trust really show us that they really don't have a handle on things and that they're running basically on numbers and theories and not thinking about the people affected by them. So when I look at them, I don't see a reason to trust the so-called science because it's clear that the scientists clearly have some sort of agenda because now they're talking against your lockdowns. And the reason why they're talking against the lockdowns is because they, aren't, they see that they can't get paid. And because they can't get paid, now they want to talk against these lockdowns. And now that they've seen the economic damage not done to people all across the globe, but done to themselves because now they can't get a payday because their theory practically crippled economies across the globe. And in places like here in America, you have many of these people on edge because the Congress is deadlocked and will not give us any sort of stimulus. And them seeing that they can't get any stimulus money, this is the thing that I believe has them looking to flip-flop on this theory, not to mention all of the anger and rage that people have uh, as related to this virus upending their economic situation. And I believe that it's that upending of people's economic situation that is going to be the thing that really ends this lockdown um, approach, because this lockdown approach is, from what I see, the definition of insanity. To continue on with this approach is not going to yield a different result. It's not going to prevent people from getting COVID-19, and it's not going to flatten any curves as related to COVID-19. It is an approach that has been a complete and proven failure, and it was a proven failure as I saw it from day one, because if you go and have people inside hiding from a virus and then they come back out, sooner or later they're going to be made vulnerable and your case numbers are going to go up and that's going to happen no matter what. So I look at that whole theory that Dr. Fauci proposed and it's a proven failure and lockdowns are a proven failure. In fact, lockdowns have done more damage than the disease because lockdowns have done damage to not only America's economy, they have done damage to people's mental health, they have made families more unstable, and they have made people more unstable. So if you wanted to have, you wanted to fight COVID-19, that was one thing, but the damage that you did with your cure did more damage to people than the disease itself. So I look at this whole theory of lockdowns, and we're seeing that it was a complete failure, and maybe we should have followed Governor Christy Nome of South Dakota, who did next to any nothing as related to fighting the virus, or followed the Swedish approach, which 
did ne where they did next to nothing, and maybe people's mental health and people's economic situation might have fared a little better, and maybe that would have helped the world deal with COVID-19 in a more effective manner. Now, this video is not going to be monetized due to YouTube's community guidelines and other policies, so if you could donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box, that would help me make more videos. Or if you could head over to Amazon.com and pick up one of my paperbacks or my ebooks, I would greatly appreciate it. That's all I have to say for this video. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation, pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback.